Battlefield 6 is one of the largest launches of the year on both PC and console. Although this is actually surprisingly well optimized and relatively bug free for a launch Battlefield game, I think the performance on non-mainstream GPUs tells a bit of a story, both on how you can optimize the game on your system at home, and also what this engine is capable of. Before we dig in, I'd like to say not to forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. This video is going to show you raw performance figures captured in-game. This title doesn't allow any third-party software to hook onto it, which means MSI Afterburner benchmarking is not an option. But just watching how the game performs in the framerate counter that's built in can give you a pretty decent idea as to what these cards are capable of. We'll be looking at both an A750 Limited Edition and a Sparkle Titan OC A770 16GB, which will be interesting because it will force us to optimize for the venerable 8GB memory footprint on one model, and then unlock everything on another. Both these cards, in terms of real-world performance and other titles, come in at, at most 10-15% apart from each other on the average performance, so we usually don't see massive performance differences between these two cards when not in memory-restricted scenarios. With that out of the way, Let's dive into the A750 and see how it performs with the 14700K. Starting off with the absolute lowest settings at 1080p with the ZSS set to performance. And although things look pretty grainy and pixelated at times, I think the performance on display is very commendable, considering we're hitting between 90 and 120 FPS at almost all times. Even jumping up to the high graphics preset with ZSS set to quality at 1080p, and the performance still hangs out at or decently above 60 FPS the majority of the time, only dropping when tons of particle effects enter the scene. At what I labeled good settings, which was a mixture of medium high and overkill, seemed to perform slightly worse hanging out at around 60 FPS, but a lot of the graininess I mentioned was cleaned up. Native resolution never seemed to perform exceptionally well on the A750, were hanging below 60 FPS most of the time which is a good base to work from when using upscalers. However, it's not really something that I would want to play on. Even turning on ZSS to quality and maintaining the high settings gets us just under or above 60 FPS at almost all times when actually in-game. At the quality setting, graininess and smearing wasn't a massive issue, but I did notice that chain link and wrought iron fences had a significant amount of aliasing, even at native with TAA. Even turning up the resolution didn't help as significantly as I thought it would, so whatever algorithm they're using is preserving the strong color contrasts and introducing a graininess, even with film grain disabled. The low preset, at least on the A750, is where I would spend most of my time, as I didn't really notice any super low resolution textures, and the performance we see is honestly probably where I'd want to play the game anyways. I think in general, the A750 does a commendable job in Battlefield 6, even though I will concede that it can struggle without resolution upscalers. The game itself though is relatively well optimized for a launch Battlefield title, and I think it's a good sign for not only Intel Arc users, but lower end budget users in general. You have a lot of options in the settings menu, ranging from relatively standard texture and model resolution, to shadow quality and reflection controls, all the way to less standard options like the quality of animated objects on screen or in the distance and even allowing you to swap between pre-calculated or baked lighting implementations and a fully real-time screen space global illumination lighting algorithm, even allowing you to adjust the internal resolution of set model. A lot of these settings are holdovers from the last Battlefield title, so they aren't really new per se, but their inclusion is definitely nice to see, and a lot of the settings seem to have either been streamlined or became significantly more granular in what you can adjust. The A770 16GB I was excited to test because I was worried we might have been running into memory capacity issues on the A750. After maintaining the high graphics preset but increasing the resolution of 1440p and setting ZSS to balanced, the game actually maintained around or above 60fps most of the time. 1080p performed very similarly to the A750, with the A770 pulling ahead at 1440p. I'd say this is only at most a 10% improvement in favor of the 16GB card, and I don't think the memory capacity is an issue or a benefit on either card. The textures fit comfortably into an 8GB buffer at the high settings, which makes sense since the game is optimized for both the Xbox Series and PlayStation 5 flavors of consoles. 
I think though that increasing the available memory on the A770 probably didn't hurt things. It also probably didn't help as much as it does in other games like Rust. However, this definitely isn't true at 4K. You need to run this game with ZSS set to at least balanced or performance, in turn rendering at roughly 1080p internally. But it also keeps performance almost in the same playable territory. You might honestly have a better experience with the dynamic resolution scaler instead of ZSS. And even on the A750, Battlefield 6's algorithm was rock solid at delivering 1080p as long as the resolution bounds don't need to dip below what the minimum is set to, because then you'll just start dropping frames again. I think by and large, the A770 performs more smoothly than the A750, but it's not because of the additional memory. It's simply because the A770 has a slightly more powerful GPU. I don't think either card is an excellent option to play this game, but it can work pretty well if you're willing to sacrifice either some settings or the render resolution. The low settings perform by and far the best on both cards, coming in at comfortably around 100 FPS at 1080p with quality ZSS upscaling. But I think the cards can also start to struggle, either at native resolutions or at the higher settings. As to what I ended up utilizing in-game on both these cards most of the time was a mixture of medium, high, and overkill settings, only turning up options that will either affect the final image quality significantly, like screen space global illumination, or ones that don't have a massive effect on the render times, like texture filtering. Model quality also had a minimal effect on end render times on these cards, along with the higher quality particle effects. The undergrowth quality seemed to have a large effect on the performance in-game, probably because this is typically animated transparencies like foliage. As such, I prefer to keep the setting on lower medium along with the screen space reflection. DICE seems to be utilizing a cube map reflection probe system in the game because the large level geometry doesn't pop out when it leaves the camera's view frustrum. However, the A770 can run overkill textures, which almost doubles VRAM usage, and gives incredibly high texture resolution on everything in the environment. I think a lot of this texture detail is kind of wasted, considering you're not looking at piles of concrete rubble, leaves, or rocks during normal gameplay, but the fact that the detail is there is very cool. I do think that the Arc Alchemist line of cards would provide a decent experience, as long as you're cognizant with what you're adjusting in the settings menu. If 60fps is what you target, then realistically these cards don't need to compromise much to get you to the frame rate target. However, high refresh rate, if it's above 1080p, seems to be a hard, quote, possible with tweaking, as opposed to just running well out of the box. 1440p and 4K saw the A770 jump ahead by a small margin, but at the frame rates we're observing, a 10% improvement on 60-ish FPS isn't something to write home about. I'm still enjoying Battlefield 6 on these cards, just keep some of the weaknesses in mind if you plan on doing the same.